I'm Simon Fraser, and this is Phrase of the Day. Ah! What a phrase! Welcome to the pod. My name's, my name's Simon Fraser, and from now on, anyone who listens to this podcast is known as a Fraser head. So, uh, phrase, phrase, uh, what a phrase. Uh, these are the new things you say when you meet someone who listens to this podcast. Um, phrase, phrase, what a phrase, uh, phrase of the day, uh, the fray, how to save a life. Um, fray, I'm afraid not, uh, fettuccine Alfredo, uh, all of these are options that you could go for, uh, when you meet someone who listens to this podcast. Um, the chances are though, you will never meet someone who listens to this podcast, but that's okay because we're out here. Uh, I'm, I'm 22, uh, go, went to Yale, which is not something I like to talk about. But since it's the only thing I know to talk about, I will talk about it briefly. Uh, I came to Yale, I'm from the UK, uh, I'm from England, but I have this accent which makes it sound like I kind of studied abroad in Orange County. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't really add up. Trying to be a comedian with this accent is really hard because you know, you've got your traditional Brits like John Oliver and James Corden who sound like this and they're very nice and they uh, chat like this and they do this. That's a horrible. <laughs> British accent from someone with a British accent um but they have like very British accents and I have this kind of in between uh this go-between LP Hartley reference um and it makes it tricky but anyway got 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 tangential uh tangentialized I don't know but yeah so I came to college as a freshman as most people do and uh, I wasn't sure what I was trying to do I just kind of came, uh, you know, it's like, story of my life. No, it's not. I, I, yeah, I didn't want to, I didn't want to do comedy uh, when I started off. I think when I came to college, um, well, you have to, you have to put in all your little things, you know, on the common app. Like, what do you want to do? Uh, and I think, I think for some reason I'd put um, piano player, which was wrong uh, because I didn't play the piano. Um, and uh, yeah, and have no musical ability. I, I, I can't, I don't think I, well, here's the thing about me. I have no music ability to the point where I just guess if something's good. Like, you know, I think like 99.9% .9 of people like hear something and they're able to say, wow, that was really good. I kind of hear something and I'm like, did, was that good? Was that good? I, it's kind of like we would, there would be like concerts and people would like acapella concerts in college and people would like go for this high note and the way you're meant to react when someone like nails a high note is you're meant to like praise wave like this. Um, and, so, and so a girl would go for like a, ah! and then I would be like, oh my God. And then I'd look around and I'd be like, why aren't you up? And they're like, she missed the note. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, that's mea culpa. Um, but yeah, um, so I, I also said I wanted to do science, which was a horrible decision. Um, I came to call, I thought I was gonna be a scientist, which was based on pure speculation. Um, I went, I went, we, there was like, you visit the campus before coming, and I went to this great lecture by this uh, brain scientist, I don't know, and he taught, gave, a, gave a lecture about mind reading. And I was like, wow, this is awesome. I want to be a mind reader. Uh, so in my housing form, you fill out the housing form to get paired with a roommate. I was like, they, were, they asked me like, so what are your interests? And I, despite having priorly no interest in science, put down exclusively on my form science. Then I get paired with, uh, lo and behold, a scientist. Uh, and we, uh, he watches a lot of Monk. Uh, the TV show with, with uh, I think his last name's Monk. It was probably like a Seinfeld, you know, like classic originality in the names. Um, and so we don't really have anything to bond with freshman year. Again, huge tangent. But 
Uh, yeah, so I, I tried out. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. Tried out for some improv groups because I was like, sure, why not? Um, didn't make it. Uh, never, never been much of an improviser. Uh, much more of a, you know, scientist. And uh, yeah, also I tried out for a lot of stuff freshman year. Had no clue what I wanted to do. Uh, tried out for 27 groups and uh, got rejected from every single one, which is kind of astonishing if you think about it. Like say you've, say you're, I don't know, say, say, you're, say you're going for a half court shot. Um, you know, the odds aren't in your favor, but you take 27 shots, you're likely to make one. Uh, especially if one of the half-court shots is the British students at Yale, uh, which they also, they never got back to my email, which was disrespectful. Uh, but yeah, so essentially, what well, really had no clue. Uh, never, never been much of a funny, uh, I've always been like a, I've been a jokester, but no one's ever called me funny. Um, and then uh, freshman summer, I was... A lot of, lot of fun stories about freshman summer, actually. I was in New York, and I was... Um, this one time, I was, I, was, I, was, I, was working at this, I was working at this company, and it was like this weird strategic intelligence company. I got the job through hard work and, you know, a brilliant first impression at the interview and a polished resume and my godfather working there. And it was... Um, I had to introduce myself on the first day, and I was like, hey, I'm Simon, I go to Yale... And then I kind of ran out of options because I didn't do anything. I was on the rugby team, but the rugby team kind of lets anyone join, which is, you know, like very nice. It was a very welcome surprise for me, but uh, for a sport that requires you to, you know, tackle human dairy queens, uh, it's probably worth worthwhile adding at least one regulation that you be bigger than 5'9 and 160 pounds. Uh, but I was the only one who could kick on the team. Uh, so I, I, I started uh, on the rugby team, which was crazy. My first game was against the army, um, and I had never played rugby before um, in England. I like had tried out. I I, tr I had played when I was like fourteen, one game, uh, and then when went quite well actually. Um, but then immediately I was reassigned to cross country because I was so small. And the craziest part about that was. Uh, my school wasn't even offering cross country that term. So really, really missed the boat on that one. So I, first game against the army, go, I'm the kicker, so I kick off and um, the army comes through. I'm, I'm the fullback, so I'm at the back, I have to make the last tackle. Go for a tackle, break my nose. I run off the pitch, I'm like, coach, I'm off. And coach is like, bullshit, Simon, you're back on. And so I go back on and then, you know, kick it off again, go for another tackle, nose again. Uh, a total disaster, but really enjoyed it. Uh, again, tangent. Um, classic Fraser heads, am I right? The, um, but yeah, so I'm interning, and so I introduced myself, like, hey, I'm Simon, I go to Yale, uh, I'm on the rugby team, and then I kind of ran out of options, because I didn't have any options, because I didn't do anything, because I got rejected from everything. So I kind of came up, came up with something on the spot. I was like, and I write for the Yale record, which is this humor publication on campus, which, which wasn't true. Uh, I had written one, I, you know, when you say you write for something, it implies you write, you know, at least more than once. I had written one article. It was, um, I had disguised it as satire, but it was more autobiography. The article was hideous international student uh, starting to doubt whether uh, chicks really do dig the accent. Uh, and it was, yeah. It was, it was a decent article. Uh, but so, so I'm like, okay, yep, that's me, great. Uh, two extracurriculars to my name. And then afterwards, the, this assistant, um, her name's Alicia Hush, um, she comes up to me and she's like, hey, um, so you like comedy? And I'm like, well, I, you could say that, but I'm not very good at it. And she's like, well, I'm a stand-up in the city if you want to ever come to a show with me. And I'm like, oh, that'd be great. I'd love to see you perform. So then like a week, and so it's like, great, I'll find the time. And then so it's like a day before the performance, she comes up to me at my desk, uh, I'm working hard. And she's like, hey, so do you want to, uh, so you're excited for the show tonight? And I was like, yeah, I can't wait. Uh, and she's like, uh, and you're feeling good? I'm like, 
yeah, I mean, I didn't realize you had to feel good to you know, be an audience member. And then she's like, and you've got your set ready? And I'm like, what? Yeah, I was stunned. I was, I was like, um, I don't know. I felt like I was, I felt like she was stone cold Steve Austin and I was, I, you know, she had stunned me. I don't know. Um, but it was, I was like, whoa, like, that's not what I thought. But I didn't say this out loud. So instead I was like, yeah, of course I've got my set ready because I'm just trying to play it cool. Spend the next 24 hours just trying to find anything um, remotely interesting on my notes. Go up on stage for the first time. Um, just absolutely bomb. Every single line was, you know, you could hear more than, what's, what's worse than a cricket? Like a... Um, like a, like a, um, like a, uh, I don't know, a tennis racket. That's wrong. Um, you could hear tennis rackets, uh, in the background. It was, it was so unbelievable. Um, it, it was like full on bombing. I think, I think I panicked halfway through and did a Trump impression, uh, which sounded, uh, quite a bit like, uh, Cameron from Ferris Bueller's Day Off when he calls up Principal Rooney. Uh, I think it's a pretty good Cameron from Ferris Bueller's Day Off when he calls up Principal Rooney and pretends to be Mr. Peterson impression. It's not a very good Trump impression, but it goes along the lines of this. It's like, Rooney, what the hell is the matter with you, goddammit? A family member dies and you have the audacity to ask for a body? What the hell is the matter with you? I ought to have you suspended. Yeah, it's not bad, but it's also not Donald Trump, which is how I introduced it. Um, so that was a problem. Uh, come off stage, just like, and she's like, you did great. And I'm like, I, you know, it's not one of those things where you can just say you, did, you, you hear the audience or the lack of. Uh, but so essentially I was like, that was my first, that was my first taste of the stand, um, of the up, you know, the SU, the, uh, the significant other, sorry, the significant, uh, you know, does it come across that other begins with a U in that word when I say it? Probably not. Um, but yeah, so it started off. Uh, then sophomore year, I was like, oh man, I've got the comedy bug. So I tried out for some sketch comedy groups, didn't make it. Uh, continue, actually continued getting rejected from stuff um, to the point where it was just uh, absolutely shocking. Um, I don't think more people have been rejected for things than I have. Um, but the, the one group I did get into was the stand-up group at uh, Yale called The Opening, which is a wonderful group. And if you are a prospective student uh, of Yale University, you should try out for the opening because it is fantastic. Uh, and they let me in because I, all I did was I talked about getting rejected from all these other groups. And they were like, ah, well, we feel bad for him. Uh, and this was actually a pretty good tactic. I, start, I applied for like this other group and uh, using that exact same tactic, saying I've got nothing else going on. And they were like, okay, we'll take you as well. Uh, so I started, started doing stand-up and then... I only do it like three or four times. Um, come, up, come up with like oh, just bad bits. Like I think my first bit, which I thought worked, which was just horrible, was I'd just go on stage like this and I'd be like, America, America, guns, freedom, guns, freedom. Sorry, I was just exercising my rights. See, it's a horrible joke and the shame and uh, torment of my friends is that they told me it was good at the time. Uh, as, as is the case with all, everything. I feel like your friends are always, you'll do something. I have, did shows afterwards. I put on shows and um, my friends would always be like, that was so great. And then I do another show like, like, a, like a month later and my friends would be like, Simon, that was so much better. And I'm like, well, what the fuck? Did you lie to me the first time? That's to total, total hogwash. Um, just tell me what you really think. Uh, so I started off doing these horrible bits and then, then sophomore, but I was kind of, yeah, I enjoyed it. Had this, had this nice, uh, didn't really have, a, didn't really know my voice yet. I was just like, oh, is this funny? Uh, and it never was, but people said it was, which again, total hogmany. I think that's the word, might not be. Actually, it isn't. Um, I don't know what Hogmanay means, but it is fun to say. Uh, so anyway, so sophomore summer, I'm out, again, completely no idea what I wanna do. So I have just agreed to go out to Sri Lanka 
to work for an artificial intelligence drone company. Uh, you may ask what my qualifications are. They were none. I just got the job, someone who I had worked with freshman summer uh, at this company um, recommended me to his friend. And he was like, come on, you got to come. It's going to be great. You know, you'll be, yeah, he really sold it. He was, he was like a, he was like the, um, who, who sells things? He was like the Billy Mays of Sri Lanka drone companies. And he's like, come on, it's going to be, you'll have a great time. And so I, I'm like, okay, well, fine. I really have nothing else to do. It's late, late in the game. I should probably do something this summer. So go out uh, to Sri Lanka, um, just by myself, get some Uniglo t-shirts, because I think that's, I, I felt like that was the Sri Lanka vibe. I looked up nothing uh, when I came to Sri Lanka. I had no clue um, anything about them besides their capital, which is Colombo, um, but also Sri Jayawardenapure. And that is not how it's pronounced, but it's how it's spelled. And sometimes that's all you want. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's good to pronounce things the right way. Um, you know, like, you know, it raises some questions. You know, if you're going to pronounce it Puerto Rico, you know, you know how people always pronounce it Puerto Rico. You know, we got to save Puerto Rico. We are uh, the hurricanes in Puerto Rico. You know, the American investments in Puerto Rico. You know, then are you also going to pronounce it Scotland? You know, you're not going to be like, oh, did you hear about the referendum in Scotland? Or did you hear about the Irish independence in Ireland? Or did you hear about the, or did you hear about the, the, um, the 1979 invasion in uh, South Africa? I don't know. Um, you know, you're not going to, you're not going to do it. Are you? So anyway, I'm chilling in Sri Lanka. Well, <laughs> wasn't really chilling. It was a bit hot, but <laughs> that's just for that's just for you Fraser heads, you know. Um, but anyway, so I'm I'm in Sri Lanka, and I get there, and I, I I had no idea what to expect. I hadn't Googled anything. I like to go places and not Google things um, beforehand. Just see see what happens. So get get out. And turns out I should have Googled it because it was an absolute nightmare. Um, it's a, I, I thought I was just going to be like, you know, you get to the airport and then you go. You know, I thought Sri Lanka was like a 30 minute drive um, all around. It's not. It's very big. Had to take it. I took a nine hour taxi uh, from the airport to the place I was staying, which was this tea plantation, which is weird in the first place. Uh, and then to make it weirder, on top of the tea plantation, was a 19th century Victorian house, um, which I was staying in with my four other coworkers, uh, three of whom were drone pilots, and one of whom was just another, another random fellow. And me and the random fellow were, you know, we were, we were meant to be like project managers, or maybe I was meant to be his assistant. I don't know, I didn't, didn't read the instructions before going out. Uh, but I had packed a suit for some reason, which makes no sense when you're on a tea plantation in rural Sri Lanka. Um, but it, it was a good time. This was around like the time of, just for, just for timestamp reasons. Remember the 2018 Eastern Conference Finals between uh, the Celtics and the Cavs? You know, game seven when LeBron like kind of hit, made that layup and then like Marcus Morris was on his shoulders and then LeBron was like, Ugh! you know that one? Yeah, you know, it if, you know it if you know it. And so I'm out there and you know, first night, go to bed, lizard in my bed, not exciting. Uh, and then the first day, go out there and start working. Uh, but I, again, I, it's more standing. I just kind of stand because the guy who I'm with, the 30 year old, like actual project manager, like knows what's happening. I'm a 19 year old, 20 year old idiot um, who didn't get into the um, the Latin dance group at Yale. I don't know why that would be relevant. But so, I, so I'm just kind of standing there and then like five minutes into the operation, one of the drones uh, crashes. The way, this, the way this company is meant to work is like drones spray crops instead of farmers. Uh, sorry, drones instead of farmers spray crops. They're not <laughs> drones before weren't being like, ah, you a farmer? <laughs> you know, how drones do. Um, but so, because essentially it's good for two reasons. One, 
you eliminate like the, the health risks to farmers of spraying pesticides, which can cause all kinds of uh, nasty carcinogens, cancers. I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a biologist. But uh, the other, and the other thing is like you can target the crops more effectively using drones. Um, so essentially it, it gets you more pesticide, more bang for your buck, more pesticide for your, for your, for your puck. I don't know. And uh, so, but it's, so it's, it's kind of a great idea, but then it doesn't work if the drones crash. And this is exactly what happened. One of the drones crashed. And I like turned to my fellow and I was like, why, why did this drone crash? And he's like, oh, it happens sometimes. One of the drone pilots is blind. And I'm like, one of the drone pilots is blind. That should not be a sentence that's ever said. And he was like, yeah, it's okay. He has one eye. And I'm like, what? That is not a justification. If anything, like, how did he get this job? And the guy was like, oh yeah, he's meant to, you know, I think he's a, I think he's a drone a student at Drone University. And I was like, that can't be a place. Uh, I looked it up. It is kind of a place in Travis City, Michigan. So shout out to all my Fraser heads in Travis City, Michigan. Stop by Drone University. Uh, hottest ticket in town. Uh, but anyway, so, so then it keeps on crashing. I'm like, this is a horrible operation. And we, like, and we also have to rely on, we're using like Excel spreadsheet or like maybe like on, we're using some sort of internet. Uh, but the internet does not work. And every time the internet does not work, we have to call someone. Uh, you know how you call people. Um, and we, but the problem is to call the IT guy. The IT guy lives near the airport. He lives like nine hours away. So if the internet's not working, we have to wait a day until the internet's fixed. So, so and also, you know how like IT, IT guys don't always fix the problem. Um, Especially, and this is no shade on this is no shade to Sri Lanka IT guys, but just our IT guy in Sri Lanka was, you know how like, what's a good example? You know how like um, Tim Tebow is not good at um, football. Wait, no, that one's wrong. He's good. He's good at football. He's he's not good at baseball, uh, or he might be good at baseball. I don't know. Um, I haven't really watched it. I saw a home run he hit. I'm gonna change my example. I'm going to say, you know how I'm not good at music? Uh, no, I've, I've, lost, I've lost train of thought, but essentially this IT guy was not good. He didn't know anything. I don't think he was an IT guy. I think, he like, I think there was some kind of mistranslation in the phone book. I think he did some kind of other stuff uh, because he had no clue what he was doing. So the internet just didn't work. Uh, and so I'm like, okay, well, actually, I, this isn't really what I want to be doing. Um, I kind of had this great moment of realization. I was like, ah, I want to pursue comedy and I want to pursue investigative journalism because I was interested in that at the time. And um, it was actually crazy. I had, I've, I've only ever written one story um, or one journalism piece for a publication or anything like that. Ended up breaking international news. For I didn't even realize it at the time. I, did, I wrote about Cambridge Analytica in like November 2017. Uh, and then the whole like saga and everything broke in March 2018. And it turned out I was like the first person to interview a Cambridge Analytica employee on the record. He gave like secrets about the company. I had no clue. I was like, I'll take it. Um, but yeah, so, that, so I boast a 100% success record in investigative journalism. So if anyone at the New Yorker or the um, ProPublica is listening, uh, I'm still available. And I'm willing to get into the nitty gritty facts, such as the great Wall Street pizza disappearance of 2020, uh, or maybe it was 2019. In case you don't know, that not, I don't think anyone would know, but Wall Street pizza was this restaurant in New Haven, which closed down. Um, and it, the employees didn't know until the day of, and they turn up. This was before quarantine or anything like that. Um, they turn up. And the owner is like, yeah, sorry, we closed today for good. This is an establishment that's been around for 60 years. Um, famous, famous joint. And it just closed. And I'm not, say I'm not saying there's a story there, uh, but that's exactly what I'm saying. No place just closed. Something's fishy. I think the mob's involved. Uh, I think uh, Yale University is involved. Um, I think there was probably some sort of food poisoning. Uh, I'm just, I'm willing to explore all options, but if I ever write a story about Wall Street Pizza and uh, the, or if I ever get captured by the mob, 
Um, you'll know it's because of this or other things. Um, I've had a few run-ins with the mob. Um, but anyway, so I'm in Sri Lanka and I, I call up the CEO. I'm like, I don't want to do this. This isn't for me. I want to do comedy and investigative journalism. And to his credit, this guy is like really trying to like make the most, he's kind of like, he flew me out here. Um, but it is an unpaid 12 week internship, which is like the worst thing in the world. He was like, oh, come on, I've paid for your flights. I was like, okay, well you paid for something I don't think I really wanted to do. Um, and so I told him I'm like quitting, which was a crazy call. I've never like, I, I only thought like I quit stuff. You only had to say I quit in like wrestling matches from the early 2000s. You know, like when Shawn Michaels or Ric Flair would go up against each other. Um, been watching a lot of wrestling lately. Uh, always amazed when they have the signs, uh, which like kind of, you, they have a big surprise, like um, John Cena would return and some guy would be holding a sign saying, John Cena is back. And it's like, how did he know? Um, it's scripted. I learned that too late in life. But the, anyway, so I, and I, I called the guy, I'm like, I quit. And he's like, wait, before you do that, I'm like, I already did that. He's like, have you tried telling the stories of these Sri Lankan tea farmers. And I'm like, I don't speak their language and they don't speak mine. And he's like, okay, well, have you tried making them laugh? And I'm like, I, let me direct you to my answer to your first question. And so essentially I, I, I got out of there and it was horrible. I was, and then kind of like, kind of then had this moment where I committed to comedy and never really got into investigative journalism um, because I don't know. I never found the story until this Wall Street pizza story. I'm telling you, there's something there. This place does not go under. You should look it up. Um, no one's written about it. And I'm telling you, there is a huge story there. Um, but anyway, so junior year comes along and I'm, kind of, I'm still in this group, uh, the opening, it's a great group. But I started doing my own stuff, started putting on my own shows in my basement, which sounds incredibly creepy. But um, it was actually quite a big basement. You could fit like... 90, 90 people in there and it was great like I did like three shows an hour long oh fuck totally forgot um I did the fringe I did the Edinburgh fringe in 2018 uh I was probably the least qualified person ever to get a um 40 minute slot at the fringe uh at, uh, essentially I like had no idea what I wanted to do with my summer um and then I'm like oh well actually the fringe is on. Maybe I could get a slot. And I don't know how, I don't know. essentially because it was so late in the game, I kind of emailed all these joints. I was like, maybe there have been people who dropped out and so there'd be a space available. And so the fringe in Edinburgh, in Scotland, goes from July 31st, like August, it's all of August. And so I like checked their websites on like July 15th or something. And some of them were like, we have new availabilities for this time and this time. And so I got a, I got a 16 day run at the fringe um, doing, a 40 minute doing a 40 minute show, which I kind of wrote over the next three weeks. And it was so bad, <laughs> but um, it was a great experience and really cool living in Edinburgh uh, and being in the fringe. But since it was so late in the game, I had no press or anything like that. Um, had it, but it, it was still, and the amount of times I bombed was crazy. Um, I kind of, I did love it just because I didn't have anyone like, mar I just had market myself. And so I would like, you, the way it works is you go to the Royal Mile in Edinburgh and you just hand out flyers for a show and you have to sell it. You're like, uh, theater at this time or whatever. Or are you interested in, you know, I don't know, <laughs> bananas uh, and Babes, I don't know what that show would be, but um, I, I, so I, my tactic was I'd essentially just be the most enthusiastic promoter uh, on the Royal Mile, and I just hand a flyer and point it at someone, and I'd be like, yes, and they'd be like, yes, and I'd be like, wow, okay, come at eleven fifteen, and they'd be like, okay, and then they didn't come, but it was um, still great. Some people were a bit more forthcoming. I would be like, yes. And they'd be like, no. And one person, which was kind of like, you know, fair, you know, funny stuff. You don't have much time to improvise on the spot when you're confronted by a promoter. One time I was like, yes. And this other guy was like, fuck you. And I was like, whoa, that is way too far for a 20 year old just trying to make his start in, make his start in the industry. <laughs> uh, but it, it was an okay show. Uh, bombed a lot of nights, which is a lot, which I found is a lot more brutal than bombing for five minutes. 
uh, in college or uh, bombing for five minutes in New York. So it was, it was, it was okay. Um, it was a good experience. And some nights I did well, uh, some nights I did not. Uh, my mum came for the last two nights and she, the first night totally like did horribly. Like, and she, my mum is the most supportive person ever. She came out of the show and she was like, that was great. And I was like, I, I didn't hear a laugh. Like this is one of those cases where I know it's bad. You don't need to lie to me like you do with my, um, I don't know, that, you know, chicken making ability, I don't know, um, Fraser. And so, so yeah, so I did that and then like go into junior year in college, start doing shows in my basement and it's a, just a, a kind of like put on shows, people would come, which was nice of them. I don't think they had anything better to do. Uh, and they'd always be like, it was great. And then like the next show they'd be like, that was so much better. And I'd be like, you are, guys are liars. Uh, you just straight to my face. I know you're doing it and I know you're gonna do it the next time. Cause I know this one wasn't great either. Senior year, started doing more shows, got to the point where I was like, could probably have, could probably start charging people for shows, especially since I put a lot of work into like hours. At this point I had like two hours of material um, in like November. So before the big Yale Harvard game, put on a show um, and sold tickets for like five bucks a piece and sold out, which was cool until, until like it got to the day of the show and no one came or like half, half the, half the, half the 150 person, whatever audience was empty, uh, which is, uh, I don't know if you've ever claimed to have a sold out show and then the audience is half full, but it was bad. Uh, it was a fine show, but it was just, it was just a bit dull looking to the right and being like, how are you doing? And they'd be like, we're doing great. And then you look to the left and you're like, and how are you doing? And you know, no one was there. So uh, anyway, did some more, uh, got to play at Toad's Place, which is a nightclub in New Haven where the legends play. Uh, bon Jovi, Rolling Stones, Bob Dylan, uh, Kanye. Um, though I don't believe Charlie Puth has played there yet. So maybe not all the legends. God, isn't that guy good? He can just, you know, perfect pitch or whatever. He goes like, ah, I uh, also have perfect pitch. Uh, but yeah, so it was cool and got to perform there. Got asked two days later because the owner of Toads liked my show. It was cool. It was like 200, 300 people came out and I, it was kind of, it was kind of a great opportunity to, um, because I think a lot of people didn't know that there was going to be a comedy show. It was like a pre, a pre to, uh, to just like a night out every Wednesday, Yale students go out to this club. And so I think a lot of people turned up not realizing there was going to be a comedy show. And so we're like, yeah, party, party. And then they were like, oh, who the fuck is this guy up there? Like, how did he get a microphone? But they had to listen to me and it was good. And then la quarantine, la COVID, la, la, uh, what's the other one? Coronavirus, yeah, that's it. Uh, coronavirus hit, no more shows. Uh, I was pretty excited because I was gonna give the class day speech, the graduation like funny speech. We have a funny speech and a serious speech for graduation. And my friend Oscar and I had, um, had got the chance to do it and we had a pretty funny speech, but obviously it's, we had to do it virtually, which isn't bad. It comes out on Wednesday and it's the best you can do, but it would have been nice to perform for however many thousands of people. Um, it's funny, Yale just doesn't want me to perform like for any, any events. Um, sophomore year, I came second place in this competition called Last Comic Standing, which is literally just like, it doesn't, it's the least important thing. It doesn't prove who's the funniest person at all because all it is is if you bring your friends. Uh, so sophomore year, my first time doing it, I was like, oh, everyone, all of you, you have to come. And then I got second place. And then like I did it junior and senior year, didn't tell anyone about it, just was like, this is a set. And you know, didn't place. Uh, some might say it was because I was not funny. Uh, I, w I wouldn't be inclined to disagree, but also it's just a popularity contest. And so, cause I got second place, I got the chance to open for Michelle Wolf, who was coming to campus. I was like, whoa. And this was right before Michelle Wolf did her correspondence dinner, um, which was, so it was before she was like massive, but she's still big. And I was really excited. 
And, but then it was during a hurricane season in Connecticut, you know, hurricane season in Connecticut. And so uh, she, and her train got canceled, so she didn't come. So I didn't get to open for Michelle Wolf. But thank God I didn't, thank God I didn't open for Michelle Wolf because I was just starting stand up then. And so it was more of the, I was less thinking about like, is this actually funny? I was more like, do I have anything that is funny? And I had one story which had happened to me in a New York club. I was uh, perform. it was like my second time performing at just an open mic. And the, I like, again, just bombed so hard. I think I had just discovered John Mulaney. So I was like, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go up there and speak like John Mulaney the whole time uh, for six minutes, which was just a horrible decision. Because I go up and I'm like, hey, how's it going? Uh, which is not how John Mulaney sounds. Um, and also I didn't have any jokes. So then I bomb and then the host takes the mic and typically the host like says nice stuff like, you know, congrats or good job. But he can't say that to me because I bombed. So instead he just looks at my pants and is like, are those velvet pants? And in my head, I'm like, these are corduroys, you, you, um, you un... Uh, you unsequined fool. I don't know. And, uh, but before I could say that, some guy in the audience yells out to the host. He's like, you can't say that. And the host is like, why can't I say that? And the, the guy in the audience yells out, it's homophobic. Uh, he's clearly a queer. I'm like, I don't know if that's the way to, I don't know if that's the way to, I don't even know what that means. I feel like it was very good intention starting off with the, you know, yes. Protest homophobia, we should not have that. But then, I feel you were a bit homophobic then, uh, to me, who, I, and also, what, what? I was very confused by this. Uh, and so I was, gonna, I was gonna tell the story, but the way it actually happened, because uh, he didn't actually say queer, he said a worse ver the word that begins with F. Um, and he had called me that. And so I was like, and I was at that stage of comedy where I was like, oh, if he called me that, then I can say that. And you know, I'm an idiot. Uh, and so I was gonna go up on stage for like 400 people and say that, and I'm pretty sure that would have ended my comedy career before it began, but uh, thankfully toned it down a bit, uh, which is a good lesson. You know, I think being at, yeah, being at like a place like Yale, which is like, yeah, comedy is very, it's, it's, very, it's, it's you know, you're not gonna, it's, it's so different from like New York clubs, and you do have to, you have to be more conscious and probably this, there's so much funny stuff you can't make jokes about here, which would kill anywhere else. Um, but you do like, it does give you like pretty good training or lessons. You always just, you know, you never want to punch down. And sometimes you learn, sometimes you're in comedy clubs in New York and you're like, Jesus Christ, these people are just like punching down the entire time. And me, I'm like in a, I'm a, in a very privileged position where I don't have, where I, you should always punch up. Uh, and I just, I'm in a position where I don't have many people to punch up at besides myself. So I think you should always, you should always aim to punch up in comedy, never punch down. And I think Yale um, is a really good environment for learning that. Uh, and hopefully it made me better as a comic and a person. Because, um, you know, you start off, when you start off, you're like, I have no idea. I just want to tell like jokes and I don't know if they're like, if they're what I believe, just are they funny? Do they have a setup? Do they have a punchline? And sometimes when I was telling them, they would have neither. But it was still a, it was, but once you learn and grow, um, and you, especially Yale really challenges you as a comic, because uh, they challenge you to, <laughs> I want to say not be funny, but they also challenge you to just think more critically about your jokes. And that is a good thing. You should always be thinking critically about your jokes. So I'm grateful for that. Uh, so anyway, so now, you know, it's, so now, um, so that's kind of like the basis of my entry into comedy. Um, started when I was 19, here now, doing okay, um, not, too, not too great though, uh, and we shall see. But nonetheless, uh, what a time, and if you've enjoyed this opening podcast, which I have uh, probably said nothing of interest in, but if you have, um, well, follow me on Instagram at Swiss Milk Chateau. Uh, there's the band Neutral Milk Hotel. Uh, so the Swiss are famously neutral, and in Switzerland, a hotel is a chateau. So that explains that. Follow me on Twitter, Simon Fraze. Uh, and uh, Fraser Heads, Fraze on. <laughs>